So let's talk about the Emperor's own Golden Legion and the forces of the Talons of the Emperor with the Adeptus Custodius Codex in 10th edition Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Custodies. In this video we're going to take a full look through the new Codex for 10th edition, 4 new detachments, the new datasheet rules, and see what we've got for pretty much the most elite army in Warhammer 40k, perhaps unless you're counting those Imperial Knights. In the book we've got all the normal things that you'd expect in a 10th edition 40k codex, lore and miniature galleries, crusade content and combat patrol rules, those ones featuring the new custodies combat patrol, the one with the guard, wardens and terminators. In this video though, as usual on the channel, I'm going to be focusing on the mainline Warhammer 40k rules, and there have been some big changes from the index, though not all for the better. Martial Qatar, their faction rule, is their choice of melee stances in close combat, getting either lethal or sustained hits for some damage boosts. There's four detachments here in the Nor Maidens for the Sisters of Silence, the Talons of the Emperor for a more balanced Custodes army, and then two versions that focus on the mainline Custodes, the Shield Host is the perhaps primary one, and the Auric Champions, a slightly different and quirky formation built around Custodes characters and not much else. In the codex there's 18 data sheets, the same as they were before. There have been several changes, including war gear for the new shield captain, a change to Castell and Axes, and unfortunately a few nerfs to certain data sheet abilities. Though perhaps more so than any other army in Warhammer 40k, they're kind of dependent on their Forge World choices for a more complete army. There's 13 more data sheets that'll be in the Forge World Index. This one's the digital download, so they don't actually appear in this codex, and I won't be covering them in this video. They haven't changed since the index. As I mentioned a bit more later, the point section in the codex will be redundant. As with the rest of the codexes of 10th edition, the point section just generally doesn't make much sense. Games Workshop will release new digital points sometime before the codex goes completely live. The only bit that's really worth paying attention for the points section is for the enhancements, which generally don't tend to change too much between the printed points and what they turn up to be in the digital rules. I said the main addition of interest for the codex are the new detachments. The reaction hasn't been particularly great to the new rules, and I would just like to say a quick thank you to the folks who helped me put this review together, Sir Joshua in particular, though a few others helped out as well, and you know who you are. Before we jump into the rules for the army, unfortunately to start on a negative note, it is worth mentioning that there are big nerfs in this codex. Internet reaction to the new rules has been very negative indeed, and I would say that from my own point of view it is somewhat justified. The detachments are interesting for having different ways to play for the army, though I feel like each individual one maybe doesn't have quite as big or exciting changes in flavour compared with some of the other armies out there. It really does feel like a codex where its primary power is going to come from the data sheets and not the rules that support them, which maybe just makes them feel a little bit less interesting than some of the armies in 40k, with really quite powerful supporting rules and flavorful stratagems. On top of that, the majority of the changes to data sheets have been for the worse. It doesn't necessarily mean that the units will wind up being less competitive if, say, Games Workshop dropped the points cost on these units as well. But overall, it's just not adding up to a very feels good codex if you look at both the detachments and the data sheets, and both of them seem to have overall got worse compared with what you had before. Before we can judge overall power for the army, I would bear in mind that we need the digital points. They shall be released sometime between the 15th to 27th of April, and I will absolutely be covering these on the channel, as then we'll have a bit better idea as to whether or not the book really is looking like it's going to be weak for the first few months after release. It definitely looks like it's a possibility at this point. Though I'd just bear in mind that with the normal way that 40k balance cycles work, if the book does wind up being underpowered, it seems very likely that Games Workshop will give them some sort of a helping hand, either via points updates or via rules updates in a future balanced data slate. I'm not saying that the rules in the codex might be less interesting compared with what came before. Depends on your own take on the detachments, I suppose. But I think it's reasonable to be somewhat reassured that if custodians happen to be ridiculously weak post-codex, they will get improvements that will put them far more towards the mid-tier of Warhammer 40k. We have already seen them start out 10th edition being ridiculously strong, then nerfed down to one of the weakest armies, and then coming back to be one of the best in the game again. Things can absolutely yo-yo every time they change points costs or rules. With that disclaimer out of the way though, let's get into the rules themselves. The army rule is Martial Qatar, exemplifying the Custodes prowess in close combat, and this one is a rule that affects the Custodes units but not the Sisters of Silence, as they don't have it on their data sheets. The rule has changed a bit since its index version, there's one fewer option than there were previously between stances of Qatars, 
Unfortunately, we've lost the minus one to hit stance, which is kind of sad as that was quite a nice defensive one that they had and a good one to trigger if your opponent was charging you rather than the other way around. On the plus side though, you don't have to select one martial guitar stance for your entire army all at once. You can now do it on an individual unit basis, so one unit could be specialising in taking down hordes with Decaturai, while another standing next to it could be using Rendax to try and bring down a big monster. That definitely is a positive, though it does maybe skew the army just in general, away from being tanky to being a bit more dangerous in combat. In any case, for the choice of stances themselves, you have Decaturai that gives melee weapons sustained hits one, or Rendax that gives you lethal hits. Generally, Decaturai is going to be the one to go for if you're fighting infantry and things that you wound on a 3+. plus. That's usually going to equate to a rough 20% increase in damage on average. And then Lethal Hits gives you the auto wound on 6s to hit. Typically, that's going to be a 40% damage increase if you're wounding on a 5+, plus or worse. The two are kind of even if you're wounding on a 4+, plus, but Lethal Hits is solidly worse than sustained if you happen to be targeting things that get wounded on a 3+. Plus. Overall, it's definitely not a bad rule, certainly impactful on the phase that the Custodians tend to be most effective. I feel like the lethal hits is maybe the most important thing when they happen to be fighting something that they wound on a 5. Generally, they might well be able to handle enemy elite infantry and hordes quite well already. But getting almost a 50% damage increase against big monsters and vehicles is really quite a big deal. A few rules in the codex do key off this as well, such as a shield captain having a single turn of getting both stances at once, and a shield host giving you a turn of criticals on a 5+, plus, so you'd be able to trigger the stances a fair bit more easily there. Unfortunately though it doesn't look like there's any overarching defence against devastating wounds or mortal wounds, something that might have been helpful to just bake into the faction altogether. In the past they have had special rules that have given them a little bit of defence against those things and it might have been nice to have one of those as a core rule. Moving on to the detachments and this is one of the main areas of interest that gets added for each codex. The general principles are that none of them actually lock out any models so you can field an entire army of custodies in any of them though these ones certainly encourage certain picks over others, with pretty much all the support being locked to certain classes. Going through them, we've got the Talons of the Emperor detachment, that Sisters of Silence and Custodes fighting next to each other for getting bonuses for battling the foe side by side. The Shield Host is still by far the most standard Custodes focused detachment out of any of them. This one's changed to focus far more on damage, with a big turn of damage dealing. The Sisters of Silence get a dedicated support detachment in the Norm Maiden Vigil, this one tries to do battle shock things but doesn't really add much raw strength in my opinion. And perhaps the biggest question mark for them for me was the Auric Champions. It turns out that that one's focused on Custodes characters. Games Workshop trying to make a Custodes Hero Hammer style list work. Pretty much all the benefits here are to try and make your characters mightier or more dangerous. Jumping straight in though, and let's start out with those Talons of the Emperor. As mentioned, this is the one that supports both the Custodes and the Sisters of Silence fighting side by side. The core rule giving you defence against mortal wounds and psychic for the Custodes, and a bit more damage for the Sisters. This basically works by granting auras to both parties, and they trigger when the other Talon of the Emperor is within 6 inches of them via auras, which isn't the worst thing in the world, and if you've got a good mixed battle line, it might not be that hard to trigger. I feel like it could be a little bit clunky though. Potentially if the opponent is able to destroy some fragile Sisters of Silence units, then it could make the Custodian Guard suddenly lose the abilities. Or potentially if units go charging off into close combat, you might get out of aura range. For the boost that the Sisters give to the Custodians, you get a rule called Null Aegis. This one feels like almost a mini version of the Shield Host's previous special rule. It gives them a 5 plus feel no pain against psychic attacks and mortal wounds. Mortal wounds are very relevant given that they're one of the best ways to get through the Custodia's high toughness and high saves. Unfortunately, unlike the errated version of, of the Shield Host rule, it doesn't work on devastating wounds, which means that these are now a fantastic way to kill Adeptus Custodes again. I genuinely wonder if at some point in the future, Games Workshop is going to need to do an errata to put that rule back in army-wide. The whole change to devastating wounds no longer being mortal wounds is what has messed it up for this particular rule, and I feel like this rule will probably have been written when the codex went to the printers, and then the change to devastating happened after that. It's still not bad to have, but against some armies it's just really not going to be that relevant. Not every army is focused on handing out mortal wounds in one way or another, or even has any psychic. While the rule technically does affect Sisters of Silence, it seems that it's not going to be relevant on any of them. They already get a 3 plus save against mortal wounds and psychic attacks now, so this rule is flatly inferior and won't help. 
Otherwise, though, the boost that the Custodes give to the Sisters of Silence is a plus one to hit for Anathema Saikana units within six inches of them. On the face of it, that should be at least kind of interesting, given plus one to hit is a nice damage boost rule, but given the actual units that the Sisters can access, it becomes far less so. Unfortunately, Prosecutors are only armed with Bolters, so this won't get them to be any sort of good damage unit overall. Witch Seekers I feel like are perhaps one of their most interesting damage dealers with their flamers, but of course torrent weapons don't care about plus one to hit. I really think that that feels a bit lazy that they weren't thought of for this rule. They should have modified it in some way that they'd have some sort of damage boost, even if it was something like reroll ones to wound or something else weak like that. It doesn't work for the Knight Centura or Alea, who both hit on a 2 plus already, so it kind of sucks for them. It even doesn't stack with Alea's ability leading Vigilators, which basically means that the only target that's going to be relevant from this is Vigilators that aren't buffed, which are a fragile melee unit that are kind of rarely played, often not taken in lieu of Custodes that have similar sort of damage profiles, but also far more toughness. On top of that, there are melee units that might struggle to coordinate with nearby Custodes somewhat, Overall, for those reasons, it's just not a good faction rule, doesn't really help out the Custodes that much in most matchups, and doesn't really help out the majority of Sisters of Silence units. Kind of a shame, really. I feel like both parts of these rules could have been afforded to be a lot stronger, particularly given the positioning requirements, but most armies and most matchups just aren't going to get much benefit out of this, even if they build around it. Moving on to stratagems, though, admittedly, a lot of these are a lot more used. Unfortunately, there's no fights first or resurrecting custodians to be had, but there are a fair few useful ones. For 1 CP, we've got Talent Pincer, which is a battle tactic one. This one allows you to make a reactive move of 6 inches when the enemy moves within 9 inches, and like quite a lot of other stratagems in this detachment, you can use it on 2 units, provided one and only one is an Anathema Saikana unit. That certainly doesn't hurt, as an extra nice to have. Though I feel like maybe the core focus is just going to be when it comes relevant on a standard Custodes unit, having reactive moves on them when they're skirmishing over the mid-board is great. They can backpedal from an oncoming melee threat, or potentially hide out of line of sight behind a ruined wall, and really mess with the opponent's shooting plans. Quite nice that you can get this free with a shield captain potentially too. For 1 CP, we've got Talons Interlocked. This one's a damage boost battle tactic, and again I think it's one of the better ones. You get plus 1 strength and plus 1 AP for a shooting attack if you target 1 unit and 1 unit only. Again, you can potentially use it on 2 units if one of them and only one is a Sisters of Silence one. Custodia's shooting isn't usually the biggest be-all and end-all, but in all honesty, this is really quite a fearsome buff. Getting Guardian Spears to strength 5 and AP 2 is just going to make an absolute mess of Space Marines, particularly if they're firing twice and maybe even re-rolling wound rolls. Otherwise, Alaris Custodians will make a mess of Hordes, Sagittarium Custodians could be fun, could be nice for Witch Seekers, and you could even throw it into that whole combo with Custodian Guard and Kyria Draxus for an absolutely savage shooting unit. Again, this one is a battle tactic stratagem, and again, I'd debate this as one of the better ones. Often, Custodians can destroy what they need to in melee, and just having just that little bit of some genuine range threats to reach out and touch something you otherwise can't reach can make a big difference in a game. Next up for 1 CP, Hunter's 1 gives you 4 back shoot and charge. Again, really quite nice for being able to skirmish with foes in the midboard. Means that if you get into a protracted combat and tank some things on your invulnerable saves, you can drop back, shoot something, and then charge the same thing or something else, meaning that you'll get fights first. Again, can do it on Sisters of Silence as well, though I'd mainly just focus on using it on Custodes units. I guess not the worst to think that things like a massive unit of Witch Seekers could still threaten to flame down a whole bunch of enemy hordes, even if they got touched in combat. Overall, between these three, I feel like they're just already quite solid situational ones for Custodius scrapping in the midboard. Next up, we've got one command point for Empiric Severance, a 4 plus fail no pain against psychic attacks and mortal wounds, and you can only use that if there's a sister's unit within 6 inches. It's not awful, but it's only going to be an upgrade from the 5 plus that you already had, which does maybe take the shine off it compared with if you just got this base. Effectively, it amounts to a plus 33% extra durability. It's generally not too bad if you are going to be taking a fairly staggering amount of psychic damage. Maybe if you had multiple Tyranid Maliceptors line up to shoot you with their psychic attacks. Quite a niche one, though, given that not all armies even have psychers. For one command point, we've got Shield of Honor. This one's a kind of fun one in which an Anathema Saikana unit within 6 inches of a Custodius unit can't be shot. Instead, the unit must choose to target the nominated Adeptus Custodius unit within 6 inches, and it only works if that Adeptus Custodius unit is an eligible target, so there's no hiding Custodius out of line of sight and still somehow protecting the Null Maidens. 
as some janky 40k rules combos have allowed in the past with other units. This one does occasionally seem pretty interesting. I guess most of the time you'd ideally not want to spend the CP here and try and just hide the units if you can. But if that's not possible, say you've just had some Witch Seekers barbecue some enemies and then are about to take some big return fire, you could suddenly surprise the foe by just catching all that small arms fire on the shields of the custodies and give the sisters another turn in which to purge some foes. Situationally, that feels like it could be fairly disruptive. Finally, for 1 CP, we've got Emperor's Executioners. This one gives you a plus 1 to wound against an enemy unit that's below its starting strength in the fight phase, so damage an enemy unit and then get to hit them really big. And again, as often as the case, you can do it on 2 units, provided one of them is a Sisters of Silence unit, and they're within 6 inches of each other this time. Plus 1 to wound is really quite a nice one to have access to. It just does require a little bit of setup, maybe plinking some damage with Guardian Spears, or making sure that you can slay one model, which isn't always going to be the case. But overall I feel like it's interesting that you can still get this to on big tough stuff if you want to. But a plus one to wound is an option for things that aren't monsters and vehicles, unlike the old Slayers of Nightmares, but provided you do chip at least a tiny bit of damage. Overall I think this one's quite a good one for Guardian Spears. Overall I would say that the majority of stratagems here are genuinely quite good. If you just literally looked at them from an Adeptus Custodius point of view, most of them are really quite usable on the Custodian Elite Infantry fighting in the midfield. If they happen to be Sisters of Silence doing things alongside, then all well and good. I don't think it's actually necessary. I like the reactive movement, I like the fallback and shoot and charge, I like the shooting buff. Shield of Honor feels situational, but could be really quite disruptive for scoring objectives or allowing fragile units to survive. And Emperor's Executioners is a powerful damage boost when you put that on Guardian Spears. You just need to think about how you're going to activate it. It also seems like the detachment that's going to be far the best for the Shield Captains as well. There are four battle tactics stratagems here. Didn't mention on it on this page, but Empiric Severance and Emperor's Executioners, they're also battle tactics as well. Moving on to the enhancements, and first up we've got Gift of Terran Artifice. This one's 15 points for a flat out plus one to wound in melee. For 15 points, I feel like this one is borderline auto-include. Really great if it does remain that way as a cheap damage boost to a blade champion. Plus 1 to wound with that strength 6 and damage 3 profile is all rather terrifying. I'm sure we'll see that one in play. Radiant Mantle is 30 points. That one's minus 1 to hit for its unit if it's targeted by enemies within 12 inches. That's both range and melee. That's not awful, but I feel like 30 points makes it far more borderline than it would be otherwise. I can't see that one being quite as tempting, really. For 25 points, we've got Champion of the Imperium. This one increases the aura affecting the other Talons rules to 9 inches. So Assisted of Silence would be able to push out that 5 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds and psychic to 9 inches. Or Custodius character would make Sisters of Silence plus 1 to hit further away. It could make overall army positioning a little bit better, but given that the detachment rules don't really matter in quite a lot of cases, I'd say it's just not worth it at this price. Finally, and for a good one, we've got the Aegis Projector. This one's 20 points for once per turn, changing a failed save's damage to zero for the bearer's unit, so it can protect other models in your squad. And I'd say that this one looks really good and well worth it at that price tag. Custodia saves can be very all or nothing. Against high damage stuff, a failed 4 plus invulnerable save is going to be the difference between a big expensive custodian model living or dying. So provided your unit takes some damage at some point in the game, this could easily be paying 20 points to keep a 40 or 50 point model alive, even if it was only used once. It's far better than that though, given that this can be used multiple times, and once per turn is quite nice, so you could have it against attacks in your own fight phase as well as the enemies. This one's basically also include for the cost, I think. Far better than the Radiant Mantle, and I feel like this one plus the Gift of Terran Artifice are maybe the ones that people are going to go for. Overall, I feel like the Talons of the Emperor detachment is interesting enough. At first impressions, it's between this one and the Shield Host for the strongest Custodius detachments. I generally think that the core rule for it is kind of weak and a bit meaningless against a lot of armies when it's not relevant against devastating wounds. But beyond that, there's at least six usable stratagems, some a bit more useful than others, and two good enhancements in the Terran Artifice and the Aegis Projector for a bit of more raw damage and defense for fairly cheap. I wish that the detachment rule was just a little bit more impactful. I think it is still worth having a few Sisters of Silence units move up the board. Can be handy enough to have them around for grunts and secondary objectives and actions and things anyway. Though I guess if you did want a big unit of more damage dealer ones, then you could plan on using Shield of Honor to keep them just a little bit more safe. And Witch Seekers in particular look fairly scary with Talons interlocked with the big damage boost on Flamers. Next up, let's talk Custodius characters, and here we have the Auric Champions. 
This one was maybe the biggest curveball that the book offers, having a detachment that's really focused around characters and pretty much nothing but. It is a bit weird having a detachment where pretty much all the stratagems and support are all on the character miniatures though, and not helping out the standard squads pretty much at all. The core rule of the detachment is called Assemblage of Might, and this one's a sort of slightly odd focal character damage boost that happens in the command phase. You select one enemy unit on the board, and it can be anything. Character models get a plus one to wound that target, and I would note that it says character models and not character units, so it's only the character miniature within that unit, not the entire unit themselves. I would say that given how mighty Custodes characters are, it's not awful, but it's also not great. As mentioned with the last one, it means that you could just be nominating a target where a blade champion's just about to slam into, and getting a whole flurry of strength 6, AP 3, damage 3 attacks with his power sword, or having martial katar plus 1 to wound and devastating wounds is absolutely no joke, but it does feel very weird to have a detachment rule that's usually going to be likely for 1, maybe 2 models each turn, and sometimes for no models whatsoever if nothing makes combat. Arguably though I'd say that none of the Custodius Detachment special rules are maybe really all that, perhaps the strongest of them is the shield host, so beyond that you're not really giving up as much. Moving on to stratagems, and Games Workshop have made all of these epic deeds, which means they aren't relevant for shield captains, which is kind of annoying. Maybe just a further clue that the Battle Tactic Zero CP errata wasn't really thought out at the start of the edition, and was a bit more of a band-aid fix. If you have a shield caption in this one, then the free stratagem looks like it's going to be for command point rerolls, basically. For one command point, we've got Slayer of Champions. If you use a character unit to destroy your assemblage of might target, then you get to nominate a new assemblage of might target immediately. And if the unit destroyed was a character unit, then you gain one CP. Basically means that for one command point, you could potentially have two different character units getting plus one to wound in the same turn. Again, not awful on things like a blade champion, but I feel like this one's mainly going to be relevant if you did kill an enemy character along the way, getting this basically for free is of course a no-brainer. I guess it might affect your order of priorities in the fight phase a little bit. Feels like it's not going to come up all that often, but when it does, it's a nice to have. For 2CP, we've got Superhuman Reserves. This one is to allow you to do another once per battle ability. Quite a few data sheets do have a once per battle ability in the custodies, particularly the characters. And this one basically triggers when you use that ability for the first time. If you spend two command points, then you get to essentially keep it in the tank. Trigger that once per battle ability now, and you can do later if it makes sense. You can also only use the stratagem once. I feel like this one's maybe a bit disappointing that it was 2 CP. I feel like it should have been a 1 CP one really. Pretty much none of the abilities are really worth 2 CP to be able to do it again. Particularly as you could trigger this, and then your character just gets killed next turn, and you've just wasted those CP for no gain. I think out of the options, probably the most impactful and reliably useful one will be the extra 6 attacks for Trade and Valoris' Great Big Axe. Though even again, with its pretty mighty profile, just getting 6 extra attacks for 2 CP does feel like you're expending quite a lot of resources that could have been better used elsewhere. Overall, 2 command points is a lot. I feel like it's going to be kind of niche. Maybe to have Trajan just absolutely demolish something with a plus one to wound and a big squad in tow, and then allow him to be able to do it to another really major threat the next turn. For 1 CP, we've got the Emperor's Auspice. This one's a 4 plus feel no pain for a character when they're attacked. Quite a big durability boost, I suppose. Could make a 6 wound character as tanky as a whole squad worth of custodies for a turn, essentially. It's only going to be relevant when their bodyguards shot down, though so I'd argue not quite as useful compared with a defensive stratagem that would affect their squad. Characters surviving, I guess, is all about this detachment, but at the same time, there's often only so much that any one character is going to be able to do, even if he does get boosted rules. I'd also bear in mind that Trajan Valoris and Valerian don't get quite as much value out of this one, given that they already have feel no pains, but they still will get better durability if it's absolutely pivotal whether they live or die. Next up for 1CP, we've got Ernie of a Name, a character model can re-roll hits and wounds against monsters and vehicles in the fight phase. Again, as with some of the rest, it does seem like an absolutely massive damage boost. Really nice for Trajan Valoris or that Blade Champion, and maybe more so if they've already got plus one to wound. Hit with basically all of your attacks, get some sort of boost with Martial Katar. Potentially be wounding a big tough tank or vehicle with plus one to wound, re-rolling everything that fails. I feel like this attachment might not do much else, but your characters are going to absolutely put the smack down in close combat. 
For 2CP, we've got Vigil on Ending. This one's a character model fighting in death, nominated after dying. I guess a fairly fun one to be able to threaten if they're charged and you know that they're going to be killed. It does guarantee that they get some damage output, and as mentioned, the Custodes ones are brutal. Could account for a good chunk of a squad of elite infantry, maybe. Again, 2CP makes this one less good than it might otherwise be. Quite a lot of the time, you might not have 2CP left by the time that you get to the enemy fight phase. And there's going to be a fair few times where it might just make more sense to be re-rolling invulnerable saves or similar to try and have a chance of keeping the character alive, as opposed to just guaranteeing a little bit more damage and death. Finally, for 1CP, we've got Shoulder the Mantle, which I think is a fun idea, but maybe badly executed here. You use this at the end of your movement phase, and a character can attach to another squad that they will be permitted to, provided they don't already have a character leader. I guess the idea here is that you have a character that has had its bodyguard unit shot down, and then he can join on with another fresh unit to keep him alive and still swinging. To be fair, this could absolutely come up, but about the only obvious thing to do with this detachment in terms of army construction is just to absolutely max out characters. It would be feeling maybe just a little bit weird to be taking squads without characters, where maybe you'll have perhaps one or two just to make up numbers. I kind of feel like this one would have been quite nice as a core rule for the army, just maybe have the option to allow a bit of flexibility without having to expend resources to get it. Finally, we come to the enhancements, which are definitely going to be relevant given it's a character-focused detachment. And it's kind of interesting that this is basically where the index shield host enhancements have wound up. They're pretty much a copy-paste of that. I've listed them here with their points cost as printed in the codex. Blade Imperator is 25 points, a 4-plus chance for D3 mortal wound impact hits on the charge, and a once-per-game ability of all foes must take a battleshock test after you've made that charge. Not really particularly exciting on either account there, that would have to be dead cheap to take it, and it's currently not listed as such. For 10 points, there's Inspirational Exemplar, this one's a leadership one for a 5 plus leadership, and a once per game cancel Battleshock at the start of a phase for a single unit within 12. Again, I'd say that's one of the ones that needs to be cheap, and at 10 points, it's not awful as a points filler. Being able to wriggle out of Battleshock from time to time could be useful, though it's not generally going to be great for your primary objective scoring. Typically, if you fail a Battleshock test in the command phase in the normal way, you then immediately go on to score objectives. There's no start of a phase between doing that and the chance to score objectives, so you couldn't use this rule to nullify that failed test. Otherwise, though, I think the other two are maybe more useful. Veil Blade is 25 points, and this one's the only damage boost one, really relevant in this detachment. You get plus two attacks in melee. That's going to be helpful for shield captains or blade champions and have them striking extra hard, potentially with that plus one to wound. And also there is at least a fairly helpful once per game triple OC objective control rule. You declare that at the start of any command phase, so you could just literally look at the objective that your character's on at each time. If that's going to actually make a difference, then trigger it. Every so often it could be worth something like five victory points, which definitely isn't nothing. Overall for 25 points, I think that's well worth it. Both bits seem good in this detachment in particular. Finally, for 30 points, we've got Martial Philosopher. The bearer's unit can shoot and charge after falling back, and once per game you get a reactive normal move of 6 inches if the enemy moves within 9. Interesting enough that it's basically taking two of the stratagems out of the talents of the Emperor and getting them on this model's unit. It is quite a pricey enhancement, but I feel like quite a useful one, really. Reactive moves on big scary custodians can be really disruptive, potentially stopping the enemy from dealing damage to an absolutely critical squad. And being able to fall back, shoot and charge I think is genuinely quite good for things skirmishing in the midfield as well. If you're locked up with a suboptimal target, you can fall back and fire off a whole bunch more guardian spear shots, then either charge back into the same unit for some fights first goodness, or charge against something else if that makes more sense. It is a pricey one at 30 points, I feel like it'd be fairly also include at less than that. But with those movement shenanigans being quite powerful, I think it's still in the region where it could be worth it. Overall, out of these ones though, I would rate Veil Blade as the best. A plus two attack Blade Champion triggering all the damage boosts at once would be a pretty fearsome combatant. Overall, I'm a bit sceptical as to whether or not this one is going to just have enough raw strength to support a full army though. Maybe it could be one that's a little bit more powerful at lower points levels but it is just kind of odd to have the full rules and stratagems for an army only go around your characters and not any of the squads that they're leading. They all have to just get by on standard datasheet abilities. It does feel like a genuinely different way to play some custodies though. I feel like it could be fun to try out for some more casual games. I really can't see this standing alongside things like Talons of the Emperor or Shield Host for raw strength though. I think the way that I play this will be to get a few Blade Champions and Trajan Valoris. 
Maybe put them in extra tanky squads of Custodian Wardens and have them carry the damage with the plus one to wounds on offer, plus the big rerolls. Moving on, we've got the Sisters of Silence themed detachment in the Nor Maiden Task Force. This one's the detachment that's themed around the Sisters of Silence, though there's no restriction on taking regular Custodians units in it, which you probably still want to do to do some heavy lifting against enemy heavier targets. In the detachment, as you'd expect, the prosecutors get battle line, so that means you could take a lot of sisters with bolters if it made sense to. For other detachments, the prosecutors aren't battle line anymore though. The core rule of the detachment is a battleshock type one called Creeping Dread. It almost feels a little bit like Chaos Knights. If the enemy is a psyker, or also if they're below starting strength and within 12 inches of an anathema psychana unit, they have to test battleshock in their command phase in the normal way. If they happen to be below half strength as well, rather than taking two Battleshock tests, they instead get minus one to that test. As Battleshock debuff abilities go, it's not the worst one. The test on any damaged unit will definitely trigger more tests over the course of the game. Occasionally that probably will add up to some lost victory points for your opponent, or some gained ones for you. And certainly seems bad news for any psychic heavy armies like Grey Knights or Thousand Sons. Could be kind of good against certain armies like Imperial Guard as well, where it could mess with other army mechanics like their orders. Having said that though, while it isn't worthless, I feel like it's maybe not what the Sisters of Silence really needed to try and function more as their own army. Their data sheets are just kind of fragile and don't really quite have the sort of damage output that really has to carry them as a main army, and I would have hoped that maybe a detachment that was focused on them could give them some fairly serious damage and defensive type buffs if you are going to try and have them as your primary damage dealers and objective takers. You're certainly not getting any of that from the core rule, unfortunately, and they're kind of fragile if you are trying to move them up the board to farm out that debuff to enemy units, so I'm not sure it's really the best start for a detachment that tries to make a sort of slightly niche unit class work. Looking at the stratagems though, for one command point, there's Desperation's Price. This is an anti-psycho one, and one psyche unit that's within 18 inches of an anathema psychana unit making a psychic attack, or a, say, mortal wound damage type ability. They get targeted by this, and they automatically become battle shocked, and they also test leadership. If they fail the test, then they take three mortal wounds. Auto battle shock, I guess, is somewhat interesting. Could mean that you stop an enemy unit from denying you scoring points in your own command phase when you come to score objectives. The three mortal wounds is a bit scattergun, and most of the time not going to happen though. Either way, it's very niche as it only affects psychers, and you might not necessarily be fighting them. It's worth saying that all the stratagems are locked to Anathema Psychana units, as you'd expect from the Nor Maidens detachment, really. Next up for 1 CP, we've got Witch Hunters. Again, this is an anti psycho one. The unit must target only a Psyker unit, and their damage output gets either lethal or sustained hits. I'd say that this one is weaker than the other damage stratagems of the detachment. It's certainly bad for Witch Seekers, given that they can't actually roll to hit. Prosecutors often don't have the damage to make it matter all that much. I guess maybe could amp up their ability to snipe a character and Vigilators I'd say it's merely okay for. They might not really want the lethal hits given that they have devastating wounds, so maybe sustained hits for them. It does seem directly inferior to the below one though. Speaking of which, for 1 CP we've got Anathema Blade Mastery. This one gives your Vigilator units re-roll hit rolls. This one's not locked to fighting psychers, so it is a bit more general purpose, which is nice. Though against psyker units you also get to re-roll the wound roll as well, so that's going to add up to quite a lot of devastating wounds. It does mean that a big unit of them rolling well could threaten to one round demon primarchs, though I bear in mind that their devastating wounds isn't quite as good as it used to be, only on a 5 plus rather than a 4 plus. Still though, given that they're basically the only Sisters of Silence unit that can really punch up against tougher stuff than light infantry, and this does genuinely help out their damage output a bit, it doesn't seem the worst. Next for 1 CP we've got Psy Chaff Volley, Prosecutor Shooter Unit, and until the end of your next turn the unit hit by them is Prosecuted, improve the AP of other Anathema Psychana attacks for that turn by AP-1, and if you happen to use this on a Prosecuted unit that's either a Psycho or a Battleshocked unit, they also get minus 1 to hit until the start of your next turn. As it goes the AP-1 could be useful enough, could be handy for a big unit of Witch Seekers about to fire maybe, or getting AP-3 Vigilators. Probably going to be most useful if you can also get the minus one to hit, which will be a bit more situational. I think it's okay, but it is dependent on your units working closely together and being ready to hand this out before either the Vigilators or the Witch Seekers hit home. For 1 CP, we've got Purgation Sweep. This is a Witch Seeker one where Witch Seekers with Flamers get plus one attack or two extra attacks against either Psychers or Battle Shocked units. This one does seem kind of simple and effective. On a big unit of 10, that could be a 28% damage increase to 45 average strength 4 attacks, damage 1 attacks. 
going up to 55 if you happen to be against the Psycho Roll, the Battle Shocks. Definitely feels punchy enough to clear some chaff. Maybe the only shame is that you can't use this while combining it with Overwatch as well for some ludicrous Overwatch fire, as it does specify your shooting phase only. Finally, for 1 CP, we've got Psychic Abominations. This one's reactive stealth for an infantry unit shot in the enemy shooting phase, and it further gets in the way of Psycho units, and they can only target the unit if they're within 12 inches. Reactive stealth, I think, is okay to have. Minus one to hit does mean that you might take a few less casualties. I feel like for Sisters of Silence, though, it's not really all that impressive. It's still not really going to add them up to being overall durable. If they're out in the open and getting attacked, it seems like there's a pretty reasonable chance of the squads getting wiped anyway. Overall, I can't really say there's much better news on the stratagem front here. Quite a lot of stuff that is genuinely quite good if you happen to be against Psychus. I guess not too bad if you do know that you're playing a very psycho heavy army ahead of time, though maybe feels a little bit list tailory if so. Otherwise, I'd probably rate the ones that increase the damage in their different ways, the Vigilators, Prosecutors and Witch Seeker ones, they all feel alright, adding a little bit of damage to the army, though it's a bit unfortunate that I don't think they add enough damage that they're really going to be able to tangle with things like enemy Terminators or enemy tanks and vehicles. If you really wanted to have an army that's dedicated to your Sister of Silence being the mainline damage dealers, then they would need to be able to take down those targets, and otherwise I think they're going to be reliant on some custodians to do the heavy lifting. Finally for the detachment we've got 4 enhancements, first up the raptor blade is listed at just 5 points which is weirdly cheap, this one seems basically auto include at the cost, plus 1 attack, plus 1 strength and plus 1 damage to melee for I guess one of your knight centurers, again given that this is the sisters of silence detachment all the enhancements are for anathema Sykana only. I think that does a good enough job of making an execution of great blade go from a sort of mediocre to fairly good and as always it gets better against psychers plus 2 attacks, plus 2 strength and plus 2 damage, particularly nice with their devastating wounds on 5s. Overall, if you've got a Knight Centura with a sword, then this one basically seems auto include. Kind of spectacularly more damage for just 5 points, and certainly could put them in a position to take down heavy infantry. For 10 points, we've got the Enhanced Void Sheen Cloak. This one's a minus 1 damage for the bearer only, changing the damage to 1 if the enemy is a Psyker or Battle Shocked. This one's just not good on a character really, it's not going to make them overall tough. And it's only going to be relevant if their entire bodyguard squad's been shot dead, neither of which are a good thing to start with. Next up, for 15 points, there's Huntress's Eye. This one's a debuff that happens in your command phase. One enemy unit within 12 inches must test Battle Shock. And this one, admittedly, is at least fairly fun to try and do even more objective shenanigans with enemies in the midfield. They might have already had to test in their turn, but you can certainly make them test in yours. If you say you had some custodians scrapping with some enemies on an objective and the enemies had more objective control than you, you could have a chance to just turn that objective control off before you do scoring things. If you can, then this one isn't the worst to have, just hiding out of line of sight but within range of a midfield objective certainly has the chance for shenanigans. I'm not sure how viable it would be though to actually have a Knight Centurion sitting around with a sister squad hiding out of line of sight. I guess maybe you could do that for a turn or so, and then maybe commit to the battle turn 3 or turn 4 after you've used this buff for a few turns. Finally, for 25 points, we've got Oblivion Knight, plus 1 to hit for their lead unit, and also a plus 1 to wound if their target is a Psyker. Again, kind of whatever on Prosecutors or Witch Seekers, seems alright for Vigilators. You could have an entire unit hitting on a 2+, plus, and then a plus 1 to wound against their favoured prey. It does have a bit of anti-synergy with the good stratagem for them though. And I feel like with the amount of anti psychotype rules that the sisters have in general, they don't really need too much extra help against those. Overall, unfortunately, this one doesn't look a very good detachment at all for take all commas. I think it was always going to be kind of hard to make an army really work around a segment of the army that only really has three units of light infantry as its entire main roster. I feel like to even get close, you would have had to give some pretty serious damage boosts to them, and I'm not sure that the Null Maiden Vigil really achieves that. Given the sheer amount of anti psycho stuff, maybe a heavy Nor Maiden force could give Grey Knights or Thousand Suns specifically some really big problems, resisting their psychic damage and lots of rules to help damage them more. Outside of that though, they're going to lack strength against any other foe, and any custodians allied in to help with that strength aren't going to get any support from the detachment. Lastly, and probably in my opinion the other slightly more competitive one out of the two, is the Shield Host. This one's the detachment that's more solidly aimed at mainline custodies, and it has basically been entirely rewritten since the index, most notably swapping out that 4 plus save against mortal and devastating wounds for a damage rule called martial mastery. The reaction to that change maybe wasn't particularly great, 
Custodians could often have a very good chance of just wiping out anything they caught in combat anyway between their special rules, and I feel like they often tended to quite literally live and die by their durability, golden shield lines stomping onto midfield objectives, and then they need to have the toughness to hold out against all comers. In combination with Martial Guitar no longer getting you a minus one to hit in combat when you need it, and now devastating wounds and mortal wounds being absolutely savage against custodies, it does feel like this will rule, while really quite powerful for a turn, isn't necessarily what they needed. Having said that though, it does give you a turn of some really quite savage damage army-wise. It basically feels like the calling of the war, but for custodies. You declare it at the start of the battle round, and then you get two fairly good damage boosts, critical hits on a 5+, plus, which is always relevant for Martial Guitar, and also better AP on your melee weapons by 1, lots of things going up to AP-3 with all the Guardian Spears they're likely to have, AP-2 for any Castellan Axes if you take them. The critical hits thing is often going to be a bit more relevant for lethal hits, if you're going sustained then it amounts to an extra 16% damage on your unit, not nothing but not crazy. If you're going lethal hits against a target where you are wounding on a 5+, plus, it's essentially almost an extra 30% damage output on a unit that was already auto wounding them, you will get a lot of auto wounds on the enemy and at good AP as well, should make them utterly brutal for taking down monsters and vehicles in that turn. Put the two together and you could often have plus 50% damage or more. Seriously scary stuff when you've already got very fighty custodies out there. I guess the game for this rule will be to call it both early enough in the game that it can swing the game, plus also do it at a turn where you're fairly maximally engaged with the enemy. I feel like it's going to be turn 2 or turn 3. Having to call it at the start of the battle round though is a potential weakness. If you happen to be going second, you have to declare it at the start of the enemy turn, so they know that some unusually savage melee custodians are incoming in yours, and they might try and make some efforts to either move block you, or just drop back to deny you melee as much as possible for one turn. Overall it is quite fun, really quite a heavy blow to lose the immunity against mortal wounds and devastating wounds on fours though. Stratagems wise, these have basically been entirely rewritten bar one, and I feel like this is one of the places where the custodians took the heaviest blows, there's no more stratagem to resurrect a custodian, no more plus one to wound monsters and vehicles. The minus one damage stratagem has gone, which is a really big deal against damage two or damage three attacks. And also the fight's first stratagem has gone as well. That one was kind of massive for the custodians and made them a really tricky army to fight in melee. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the worst thing in the world to have had gone away. It certainly gave them a sense of character. And I feel like just the sum total of all those stratagems being removed is kind of brutal all at once. All that being said though, they still have some good ones. Multi-potentiality is fall back, shoot and charge again. As per previously, I think it's just quite nice situationally. It means that you get both of their range and melee profiles to work, and it does mean that you'll be able to at least essentially fight first in your own phase, even if it's nowhere near the intimidation factor of fighting first in your enemy's turn. For one command point, Avenge the Fallen was a use from time to time, and I'm sure it still will be. One custodian squad that has taken casualties gets plus one attack, or plus two attacks per model if you're below half strength. Realistically, that's usually going to mean somewhere between 2 and 5 attacks for a squad with a character attached. That's kind of okay. Guardian Spear attacks do land accurately, and they leave a big mark if you can get 1 or 2 more failed saves through. Sometimes it's going to be worth it enough to try and tip the balance in a close melee. I did notice that it was previously a battle tactic, and now it isn't though. Next up, for 1 CP, we have Unwavering Sentinels. This one's for Custodies only, and it's a minus 1 to hit in melee for Custodies infantry on objectives. This one was previously the fight's first one, so quite a downgrade here. Minus one to hit in melee still isn't the worst though, at least that's one reactive durability stratagem. Could still make custodies a little bit more intimidating to charge, maybe falling short if you activate this and then getting hit back hard. For one command point, the other durability one is Arcane Genetic Alchemy, which is a battle tactic. This one gives you a 4 plus feel no pain type save against mortal wounds, and it doesn't work on Sisters of Silence, though it kind of doesn't matter given that they already have a better save. Previously this was the minus 1 damage one for 2 CP, you could get that free with a shield captain, and it could be very meaningful if you're attacked by a whole bunch of things at damage 3. In the context of losing the detachment wide 4 plus save against mortal wounds though, this is certainly handy to have, it is one of the best ways to hurt custodies. I'm sure this will see times where it's used whenever you're about to get focused by a bunch of them from one thing or another. Again though, it won't work on devastating wounds the way it's written now, not unless Games Workshop does an errata of some sort. For 1 CP we've got Archaeotech Munitions, this one's either sustained hits 1 or lethal hits at range, a small shooting boost there that isn't awful on things like double shooting custodian guard, 
or perhaps three or four Virtus Praetors firing before they charge in. It's still not massive though. I feel like it's probably going to be most effective on double shooting Custodian Guard alongside Inquisitor Kyria Draxus, where they can certainly put out a fair amount of damage. You can use this one to affect their Forge World units as well, as it's not just infantry. You could put it on bigger things like Land Raiders or Telemon Dreadnoughts or things. Finally for 1CP we've got Vigilance Eternal. This one's a sticky objectives type rule that's triggered in the movement phase for a battle line unit. It means that that objective remains under your control until your opponent can control it at the start or end of any turn. It can't be used by sisters, though it couldn't anyway given that the prosecutors aren't battle line outside of Nor Maidens anymore. Not the worst one to have given how elite the army is. Again, situationally useful and can sometimes make things trickier for your opponents to take a certain point. Perhaps particularly if the only way that they can stop you getting it is to shoot you down. Overall, there certainly are some useful stratagems here. Four back shoot and charge is nice, Avenge the Fallen does come up, and Wavering Sentinels and Arcane Genetic Alchemy are both okay reactive damage boosts, and the Shooting One and Vigilance Eternal are both usable. I do feel like pretty much every single one of these though just feels a bit borderline. Custodies are going from having some fairly expensive but incredibly powerful stratagems to ones that feel just a little bit on the mundane side across the board. Overall, given so many changes with stratagems and the special rule of the detachment being swapped from durability to one turn of huge damage, it does feel like they'll play really quite differently. Lastly, for the shield host, we've got the enhancements. These are entirely new, given that the auric champions seemed to steal all the shield host enhancements from the index for some reason. So this one's a new set. From the Hall of Armories, I think is quite a nice one. Plus one strength and plus one damage to the bearer's melee weapons. It's shield captain only. And that means that you could have a strength 8 damage 3 guardian spear, which is just a world different from strength 7 damage 2. Potentially getting some serious melee boosts from the detachment rule on the one good turn as well. Overall I think it's a lot more meaningful on the guardian spear versus the axe. It is maybe a bit annoying for shield captains though that the only battle tactic stratagem in the detachment is the protection against mortal wounds, which won't be relevant in every game. Otherwise, shield captains are unfortunately just going to be locked to doing command point rerolls, trying to reroll the odd failed save or charge roll or whatever. Probably one of the best ones is the Castellan's Mark. This one's 30 points and again is shield captain only. Feels like you might have to weigh up the two here, given that you probably don't want two shield captains given the lack of battle tactics. For this one, he gets to redeploy two custodies units, not Sisters of Silence, after determining who has first turn. As per normal with these, you can use it to place them in strategic reserve. The fact that you can redo this after you know who's got first turn I think is really quite a big deal. It means that you get redeploys with perfect knowledge, see exactly where your opponent's army are, know whether they're going first or not, and then you could either potentially hide your units or deploy them super aggressively accordingly. Could be kind of big on any big firepower units as well, maybe things like Caladius tanks. You could deploy them in a position where they're just going to win some first turn confrontations, either just be completely hidden if the enemy is going first, or be ready to pounce on the foe if you are. Putting things in strategic reserve and just messing with the enemy's deployment isn't the worst thing either, I guess. Otherwise, for 15 points, we've got Auric Mantle, an extra two wounds for the Blade Champion or Shield Captain. I feel like this one will be more used as a cheap points filler if you didn't have anything else. Two wounds is alright, but it's not that much. And finally, the really cheap one is the Panoptispex. This one's just five points for Ignore's cover for a unit led by a Shield Captain or Blade Champion. I say for the 5 points, this one's auto include if you can fit it in. Custodies can spam out a whole load of AP-1 firepower that can genuinely cut through enemy hordes and infantry. That's going to go a lot further if it's ignoring cover and they're not getting boosted saves. I feel like this one's usable enough for just 5 points in literally whatever unit you put it in. Overall, it's definitely a very different shield host in this detachment. I still think there is a lot of fun strength here. The big turn of damage is good and most of the stratagems are usable if not quite a standout. And for the enhancements, the Castellan's Mark seems very nice. The melee damage one is good, but you might not want two shield captains, unless you're literally just having him for the damage. And the Panopti specs, I think, is kind of auto include, but also not really going to change all that much. In general, the initial reaction from the internet seems to be that this is weaker than it is before, mainly due to the big blows that it took on the stratagem front, although the durability against mortal wounds and devastating wounds is going to have them really struggling against some foes. Overall for detachment balance, I'm not sure they've done quite as good a job as some other codexes. Out of the four, I feel like the talents of the Emperor and maybe the Shield Host are going to be the ones to go for. Nor Maiden Vigil just seems to be trying to build around units that can't carry the army for damage or defence. And Auric Champions is kind of a fun quirky way to play with some absolutely savage characters, 
though I feel like it's just not going to outweigh a bunch of rules that can both improve the core of your force and also stratagems that can act on the core of your force. That leaves us with just the Shield Host and the Talons of the Emperor, both of which I'd say are interesting enough to have experiments with. Out of the two, I feel like the Shield Host probably has the more interesting detachment rule. The Mortal Wound Protection is nice in Talons, but you can get the 4 plus in Shield Host where you need it, and given that neither of them protect against devastating wounds anymore, I wouldn't rate either rule as good as it might have been in the past. Taking that into account, I'd say that the Shield Host has broadly got the better detachment rule, and the Talons of the Emperor broadly has the better stratagems, really quite a lot of nice ones to support the Custodes taking the fight to the enemy, and they've both got at least a couple of usable enhancements there. Will be interesting to see what becomes the more competitively played army for the Custodes. My first guess would be that it might well be the Talons, though I'm still a bit questionable as to whether or not the Custodes are going to be overall strong when certain types of firepower just kill them quite so easily, and they have lost really quite a lot of defensive rules, everything from fights first, minus one damage, and the minus one to hit from Marshal Qatar. Detachment aside though, let's get on to data sheets. Numbers wise, there haven't been any data sheets gained or lost in this codex. There were 18 data sheets before, there's now 18 data sheets with the same names. Plus, as mentioned, they have all of their unchanged Forge World Imperial Armor Index things. For people who are new to the whole system of how 40k rules are organized, they stay in the digital index online. And broadly speaking, they won't change with this book. Only the rules that support them in this book will change. Those data sheets are really quite relevant for the army, particularly things like the Caladius tank, which can have some fairly nasty shooting. And perhaps out of the rest, at least at their current points cost, I quite like the Venatari Custodians with their free rapid ingress. That can be kind of disruptive. I kind of wonder if there might be enough to help out the Sagittarum Custodies a little bit. I feel like there are a few more things that buff shooting now. I'm not going to go over these data sheets in full here, given that they haven't changed. Check out the Forge World Index if you want to have a read of them. I still think that probably the most relevant ones are likely to be the Caladius Tank and maybe the Venatari. Dedicated anti-tank for the army, plus fast-moving Custodies to jump around the board, maybe drop in from the sky. Beyond that, for Forge World, most of the rest was considered kind of overcosted before. I don't think that's going to have changed with the way they've changed the supporting rules. In general, I feel like a fair few of their units, including their Dreadnoughts, have needed a points cut with a while. They weren't really played competitively, even when Custodies were towards the bottom of the meta. Pre-Codex, perhaps the only two units that I was thinking might potentially change were the Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought. That one was removed from Codex Space Marines, but it seems to have stayed here pretty much unchanged as well. I guess they're expecting people to use the Horus Heresy kit, despite that basically being retired from the Space Marine range. Really, I think the Custodians just need one of their Forge World ones or both of them in plastic. That'd do the job a lot better than this one. Otherwise, there was a very small chance that the Shield Captain with different war gear might have got a different data sheet. It seems it is just the one, though, with the Shield and the Parathite Spear. It's just a war gear option, though quite a good one. Before jumping into datasheets properly, I thought I'd just take a slide to talk about the printed points. Each time there's a 40k codex release, there's at least a fair few people who see the printed points page react with shock and get very annoyed that everything seems to have gone up in points massively, which will be the case here again. The way that Games Workshop does this these days is that the codex printed points were determined towards the start of 10th edition and don't really have much bearing on the values that they will be now. Since then there's been multiple balance passes, and broadly speaking most things have got at least a little bit more fairly costless. Basically don't pay attention to the codex points at all, go by the previous digital points. In general when codexes are updated they tend to be at least fairly similar to the digital points that came before. The only thing that the printed points are really useful for is looking at enhancements. When Games Workshop updates their digital points offering, they usually tend to stay fairly similar to the printed costs. At time of recording, the final points for the Custodes units will happen probably between somewhere around the 15th to the 27th of April. Depends on when Games Workshop want to get round to updating their digital document. I will certainly cover these here on Auspect's Tactics once they're out. And obviously we won't know the full strength of the Codex until those points come out. Though of course we can still get a really good idea as to how the army will function. Otherwise, when talking through the Custodes datasheets, here are some of the common themes. For battle line units, there's only Custodian Guard now. The Prosecutors for the Sisters of Silence were previously battle line, but now they're not. They only get that in the Null Maiden Vigil. Unlike in the past as well, where Sagittarum Custodians or the ones with Adrocite and Pyrothite Spears could be battle line, they're still not battle line in the Forge World Index. Otherwise, Custodians are generally very tanky. Toughness 6, 2 plus saves, and 4 plus invulnerable saves. 
Generally, small arms aren't going to worry them too much, and even big anti-tank weapons have a 50-50 chance of just getting bounced. Mortal wounds and devastating wounds tend to be particularly effective against them, and some of the detachments can still help out with the mortal wounds a bit. Nothing in this book protects against devastating wounds, though, unless Games Workshop gives them some sort of errata. Otherwise, they hit on twos, which is generally quite resistant to modifiers. They've got 6 plus leadership, which is the best in 40k alongside Space Marines, but they're no better than Space Marines these days. It does feel a bit weird when Custodian Guard can actually get Battleshock, and it matters. The majority of Custodians are Objective Control 2, which isn't awful in themselves, but for the points it's not actually really that much. If squads start getting depleted, they can get outscored on objectives. Vexillas are often part of squads giving a plus 1 OC. And that can genuinely be pretty helpful, but it does mean compromising on war gear sometimes if you take them in the Terminators or the Custodian Guard. Custodian Infantry can deep strike, so you can have them teleport in from Golden Light. It's not just the Terminators that can do that, and they can be really quite big scary threats for rapid ingress. It means that you can beam down and then hide behind some terrain and then launch your assault next turn. In general, the Custodians are really elite and get two unit abilities. Quite a lot of them have once per battle abilities one that goes on throughout the game, and then one that you can use as a one-hit wonder special move. Kind of does befit them a little bit, being such fancy people that they get more complicated rules than most. I did notice that a few of them that had sort of pseudo-3 rules generally got cut down to 2 in this update though. That represents really quite a lot of the datasheet changes. Finally, the Normal Maidens in the Assists of Silence. They have a 3 plus feel no pain against psychic attacks, so are genuinely somewhat durable against them. And they also get that 3 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds now, when they didn't used to have that in the past. A few of them get their own boosted damage in various different ways against psychers, such as anti psycho 5 plus on the vigilators. Let's jump into units though, go through roughly what they do and how they've changed in the codex. Let's start with the custodians infantry, then the custodians vehicles, then go through the adeptus custodians characters, and finish off talking through the datasheets of the sisters of silence. First up, the Custodian Guard were 180 points per 4, or 225 per 5 in the previous index. They're unchanged in the Codex. Tovner 6, a 2 plus save with a 4 plus invulnerable. These guys are some of the cheapest source of Custodian's wounds to stand on objectives, and pretty fearsome at that. They tend to be most popular with their Guardian Spears. 5 attacks at Strength 7, AP 2 and Damage 2 is genuinely scary against most targets, particularly so with Martial Guitar to flex into lethal hits when you need it and you get a fairly useful 2 shot strength 4 and damage 2 shooting that you can fire after advancing. Quite nice with the Guardian Spear that you don't have to give up maximally moving forward to be able to shoot. You do have the option of swapping out to a 4 wound profile with Sentinel Blades, but they get damage 1 melee there which maybe is a little bit on the sad side. And you can take a Vexilla in the unit for the extra objective control, taking a Shield and Misericordia to back it up. In general, most people seem to take mostly spears, maybe with a shield or two to tank some damage 3 hits, and the Vexilla and shield combo often comes up, but isn't always used, can just be interesting to have one extra tanky custody. Finally, for their special rules, they get Stand Vigil, which is reroll wound rolls of 1. If they're on an objective marker that they control when they attack, they get to reroll the wound roll instead, and that could be absolutely massive on Guardian Spear profiles in melee. Could make them really hard to charge on objectives, and if you can charge in such a way in which you take an objective, it's going to be big. Otherwise, for their once per game move, they get Sentinel Storm. Once per game, he just gets to fire twice with a unit. That makes their Guardian Spears a legitimate threat shooting, particularly if there's any other shooting synergies in your detachment. And it has been noted that this one works really well with Inquisitor Kyria Draxus, who gets really quite a lot of dangerous shooting shots, and firing her twice is kind of big, particularly with the possibility of wound rerolls. Overall, they're a solid and dangerous unit, really quite competitive and widely played prior to the Codex. Their brothers and very similar option are the Custodian Wardens. They don't get battle line, but are otherwise almost identical in stats. The only real differences between them are the slight different choice of gear and special rules. They do cost a bit more, 200 for 4 or 250 for 5. For their special rules, it's all about the defensive. They minus 1 to wound if they're with a character for anything that's got a greater strength than their toughness. Really quite hardy and basically means they always want to bodyguard someone. And then their Living Fortress special rule is a once per game 4 plus feel no pain. Between those two it does make them kind of unreasonably tanky for one turn. You need something with a pretty crazy amount of damage to be able to threaten to cut down most of a squad. They're quite nice to pair with Trajan Valoris who can handle the damage side of things a bit more. 
Otherwise, for their weapons, they don't get the shield option, but can take a Vexilla at the same hand as a Guardian Spear. The choice that they get is between the Castellan Axe or Guardian Spear, the Castellan Axes having been improved in the Codex to hit on a 2+. plus. Overall, again, Wardens were one of the most competitive units prior to the Codex release. I certainly feel like that's unlikely to change. Their durability rules are pretty good, and having lost a lot of durability rules, I feel like they might come to the fore even more, if anything. I did find that Castell and Axe change interesting, so I did a little bit of math hammer on it. First of the Guardian Spears, Strength 7 and Damage 2 attacks, Castell and Axes get 4 attacks at Strength 9, AP 1 and Flat Damage 3. Hitting on 2+, plus certainly evens up the score a little bit versus certain targets. The Flat Damage 3 is going to be quite nice against anything that's 3 wounds, but looking at the average wounds on targets for a 5 attack spear versus a 4 attack axe, it really seems that against the majority of stuff with an okay armor save, the spear is either the same or better, even against fairly optimal targets like a Terminator with 3 wounds or a Rhino Tank with Toughness 9. This is taking into account things like overkilling certain models and their best choice of martial Qatar. In general, despite them being a bit more even than they were before, it still seems that Guardian Spears really are the easy way to go. Kind of a shame it couldn't have wound up being a little bit more balanced than this. AP1 is just kind of killer against the good save targets that damage 3 often matters against. The axes do have some niches, they're a lot better against things that are toughness 8, that they wound on 3s and the spears wound on 5s, and quite nice on anything where the AP just doesn't matter, where the targets say a demon with a high and vulnerable save. In general though, the guardian spear looks like it's still going to remain the competitive pick. Next up though, we've got the custodius terminators, the alarus are 65 points per model and you can take them anywhere between 2 to 6 of them. The only number that you can't take is 4. It does mean that you can have really quite a big chunky unit with 390 points worth of termies if you wanted to. They get an extra pip of toughness and an extra wound, so they are a bit chunkier to take down for that increased cost. They fight in melee the same as regular custodies, but get improved shooting, getting a ballista's grenade launcher each on top of their auric weapon shooting. A bunch of blasts with strength 4, AP 1 and damage 1. That does genuinely help thin out hordes, particularly when it hits on a 2+. plus. Their special rules are re-rolling wound rolls against characters, monsters or vehicles, so it makes their damage output particularly great against them. Really nice for hunting down the enemy's heavies. And their once per game thing is a nice redeploy option. At the end of the opponent's turn, they can return to strategic reserve and then be ready to deep strike down again next turn. This one used to be return to reserves and then come down the next turn, so it could allow you to move across the board turn 1 if you want us. That one's no longer an option though, as you can't come in from strategic reserves round 1, means that you'd be coming back on battle round 2. Overall that feels like a slight nerf more so than a buff to me, as you no longer have the option of coming down turn 1. If you wanted them to deep strike turn 2, you could have just put them in reserves anyway, or you could just wait with them on the board to use the rule for a further turn and trigger the rule on turn 2 instead. It is still a powerful rule though, and I still think they're a very good unit. They can warp around and can be good ones to do secondary objectives, or take the fight to the opponent from unexpected angles that they might not be expecting for otherwise fairly slow custodies. The Virtus Praetors have generally been the plastic kit that's more underpowered than most since 10th edition came out. The custodies jet bikes move 12 inches as a mounted keyword, and are a little bit less tough than the Terminators, having the 4 wounds but only toughness 6, not 7. They get some shooting, either a single damage 3 shot with a salvo launcher each, or a hurricane bolter to help thin out some hordes, and their interceptor lance is a guardian spear type attack but with lance, so a plus 1 to wound can help them out against tougher stuff quite a lot. Their special rules though, unfortunately, leave a lot to be desired. I feel like both of them are kind of bad as they're tied to advancing. Turbo boost gives them a 6 inch advance, but will stop them doing any damage this turn. Could be alright to make sure they can nip from cover to cover I suppose. 18 inches could be enough to fly around a ruin and into another. And their second one in the Quicksilver Execution one is a once per game advance move thing to deal some mortal wounds per bike on a 2 plus. Means that you could be looking at something like 6 or 8 mortal wounds on a target if they can move over it while advancing. The main issue with this though is that it's not necessarily the easiest to trigger, even with a big 18 inch move you might not be able to reach your foe or land your bikes where you need to, but perhaps far more than that, usually just by using their melee damage plus their shooting profiles, you're going to get more damage than this rule would ever give you. If you were getting like 6 mortal wounds out of this on average, you are probably going to get more by 15 lance attacks on the charge with the guardian spear profile. Overall still realistically I don't think they're actually that far behind the other choices. 
I would still rate them as overcosted versus the rest though, could probably afford to go down a little bit just to bring them in line as they rarely see tournament play these days. Next up we've got the vehicles of the custodies, first up we've got the venerable contemptor dreadnought, this guy's 10 wounds, toughness 9 and a 2 plus save, is unchanged in the codex with his multi melter or strength 7 AP1 assault cannon options and does hit at least fairly hard in close combat with a bunch of attacks at strength 12, AP2 and damage 3. For the 185 points that he was though, his damage output is very low indeed. His special rule I think is the biggest reason to take him, when he's destroyed or a 2 plus he just stands up again with d6 wounds remaining, that means that your opponent might wipe him out and then he just comes back for another go next turn to deal loads more damage. It's not awful and it could be kind of disruptive, but in general it's just not seen as worth it overall for this points cost. You're just giving up too much raw damage and defense compared with what you could get in other custodies units. You could say get an entire Terminator squad of three for the same cost as this guy pretty much and that's just going to do so much more. Otherwise for the other core custodies vehicle we've got the venerable land raider. 240 points for a way to get the custodies into combat in style. It's kind of similar to other land raiders in 40k and hasn't changed in the codex. A big armored bulkhead with toughness 12, 16 wounds and a 2 plus save and he can put up to 6 custodies in it, and then it can move, drop them out with the assault ramp, and then they can still charge. Means that you're likely to get charges on the enemy at around about 20 inches away on average, which is nice. Otherwise, as it's a custodian unit, it gets to hit on a 2+, plus, which is all rather nice with the Godhammer LAS cannons. Can add a little bit of long-range anti-tank, which the custodians often lack. And besides that, it gets a Hunter Killer, Twin Heavy Bolter, and a Storm Bolter. Overall, I really don't think it's too bad. Land Raid is a kind of fine intent edition overall. The biggest question is whether or not that's actually worth it versus either more foot slogging custodies, maybe a blade champion to try and deliver them to combat with his advance and charge, or deep striking things with rapid ingress. You've got quite a lot of other options for getting custodies to melee, and you could get an entire extra squad of custodian guard or similar for the cost of a Land Raider. Maybe just getting to melee slower with twice as many bodies when you get there could be more worth it, even if this thing does bring its own threat. I would rate it as genuinely usable though, you can put a very scary squad in this with a character plus 5 custodians of some sort. Moving on to the character choices of the custodies, first up we have the shield captain, he was 140 points pre-codex and he has taken a fair few changes. His stat lines are fairly typical custodies character, 6 wounds rather than 3 that you get on the regular guys and he gets the choice of a fair few things from either the Custodian Guard or Warden's Kit, the option of a shield for plus one wound, and he pairs that with a Sentinel Blade normally, though given the new loadout from the new Battle Force box set, he can now pair the shield with a Pyrothite Spear, which does look like it would probably be the best loadout overall. That means you get the plus one wound from the shield to take him to seven wounds, and still gets to swing with a Scary Guardian Spear profile in melee. He gets 7 attacks with it, the melter gun that he gets on the spear is a nice to have, though probably not the main event. His special rules have slightly changed, his master of stances used to be more powerful, he usually gets 2 martial katars and then 3 once per game, you now just get both of them once per battle, which is handy to have both sustained and lethal hits for a turn, but far less impactful than it used to be, and otherwise he gets the captain style strategic mastery, 0 CP for battle tactic stratagems, Though unfortunately as we've talked about with the detachments outside of the talents of the Emperor he just doesn't really have that many battle tactic stratagems to go at. There's literally just the immortal wound protection one in shield host now so otherwise outside of the talents of the Emperor he's just going to be far less use and that's really disappointing given that about half the custodies character roster are shield captains. There are reasons to take him in the other detachments though he's mainly going to be using those free stratagems for command point rerolls. Genuinely not awful, say on 4 plus invulnerable saves, but not stand out either. Overall probably worth including in Talents of the Emperor just due to all the options that he has. For the other detachments, maybe if you're taking a certain enhancement that requires a shield captain, like the Castellan's Mark. Otherwise we've got the Terminator flavour of shield captain, he's toughness 7 and 7 wounds at base, so a touch tougher. He gets the Alaris style gear with either a spear or axe plus a grenade launcher. And the same free stratagem rule with the positives and negatives that that brings. He's had his datasheet ability slightly shifted around. He's lost the 2 plus chance to fight in death. But instead of that he's gained a single phase of all damage against him becoming damage 1. Kind of a side grade that one in my opinion. You've lost the option to get some fairly guaranteed melee damage. 
but if you can target this to a phase where he's genuinely going to take a lot of damage, it's going to be very hard to take down with that big 7 wounds. Overall it seems like a reasonable enough trade-off, you just would have to remember to trigger this at the start of the phase, you shouldn't really be trying to trigger it halfway through once you realise it, he's in danger. Again, perhaps could be better in Talents of the Emperor versus elsewhere. In general, pre-codex, I was seeing a lot more people run the shield captain on foot though, as opposed to taking this guy and letting the terminators operate in smaller units. Finally, for the core shield captains, we've got the one on the Dawn Eagle jet bike. Like the other two, he was 140 points, and broadly has similar stat lines and the same sort of special rule with the free CP. He gets a salvo launcher or hurricane bolter, and then gets an interceptor lance with plus one attack at six attacks there. His special rule took a slight nerf, looks like he lost the 6 inch consolidation for his units to tie up more things in combat which is kind of sad, otherwise he just gets his once per battle ability. At the end of the fight phase his unit can fall back, or make a normal move if that's more useful to you. That's really quite a nice movement thing in the right cases, perhaps best if you've been charged by an enemy unit and they think you might be locked up, just handily drop back in the enemy's fight phase and then go full in on the attack with all your lance charges in your turn. Could still be interesting for some of the enhancements out there maybe. Getting something like damage 3 on that lance could be pretty scary. In general though, unless the bikes get some sort of points improvement to the point where they're being a bit more of a mainline threat of a unit, it's probably going to remain quite niche. Next for 120 points pre-codex is the Blade Champion. He's the star of the new Combat Patrol box. Has the same sort of basic stat line as the Shield Captain, but a very different melee profile, and I'd argue an overall far more threatening one. We can either go for Guardian Spear type attacks with precision, a whole bunch of damage 1 attacks with the Volt Swords at strength 5 and AP 1, or likely the most useful one is the Devastating Wounds Victors profile, 5 attacks at strength 6, AP 3 and damage 3. Just having a few really big hits like that hidden within a Custodes unit can be so much better against Elite Infantry, and there are quite a few good ways to make him either reroll wound rolls or plus 1 to wound, both of which he will really like with that profile. Otherwise, in the special rules department, it looks like he took two nerfs. He's lost his free heroic intervention, and he's lost his re-roll advance roll. The things that he kept were re-rolling charge rolls, and getting to advance and charge once per game. Admittedly, the advance and charge thing once per game is really big. It means that a custodian's unit would be going an average of like 18 inches with a charge threat range, which is far faster than normal infantry could do for the most part. It is just sad that he lost the re-roll advance roll part of his rule, given that that kind of ensured you against getting a low advance roll in that phase, at least somewhat. Losing the heroic intervention isn't amazing either, you could occasionally set up his unit so it could protect other units, and potentially make the charge phase quite a lot trickier for the enemy. Despite that though, I still feel like the reasons that you wanted to take him are still there, the Volt Sword profile is still good, and I rated his advance and charge as easily his best rule which is still got. Plenty of enhancements that seem good enough to take one in a unit, and could be quite nice in things like Wardens where he triggers their minus one to wound as well. Not sure if he'll wind up getting some sort of points decrease to compensate him for the loss of abilities, but I still think he's a very interesting unit to be able to get custodies to the fight at longer range than your opponent might sometimes expect. You might just have to budget a command point reroll if that advance falls flat though. Next up we've got the epic heroes in Trajan Valoris and Valerian. Trajan Valoris is the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes, 7 wounds and a 5 plus feel no pain, so extra tanky there. And following the Codex updates, the main thing that he brings to his squad is better damage. His Watcher's Axe now has a name for his shooting profile in the Eagle Scream, 2 attacks at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 3, every so often could casually offer Terminator with that. And then in melee he's very fighty indeed, 6 attacks hitting at strength 10, AP 2 and damage 3, Exactly the sort of thing that you usually want to pair with the sort of mid-strength attacks of most Custodes units. Unfortunately, as ever for this codex it would seem, both of his special rules have been toned down in different ways. His Captain General rule was previously a flat out ignores modifiers, which was kind of good on things like wound roll debuffs, and particularly on anything that messed around with the damage of the attacks. It meant that you could ignore things like the half damage that Catan get, or the minus one damage that Redemptor Dreadnoughts get, both really big against things like Guardian Spears. That's been rewritten so it only works against hit rolls and ballistic skill now, which I feel like isn't the biggest thing that the custodians tend to be worried about. They do hit on 2s already, so dropping down to hit on 3s isn't exactly the end of the world, perhaps even more so because a bunch of their things happen on 6s anyway for the Martial Qatar, and that doesn't affect that chance. Otherwise the Moment Shackle is still good, but it's lost one of its better abilities. 
Once per game, you either get to have a 2 plus invulnerable save for a phase. If he finds himself on his own and about to get focused down, then that could be kind of immense. Though I feel like more likely the one that you might be using is the big damage boost. It makes his Watcher's Axe a casual 12 attacks at strength 10, AP 2, damage 3. So he can go into just absolute rage mode and hopefully obliterate a very heavy target. He will be absolutely hilariously murderous if you combo that with some detachment things. Maybe the turn when the shield host gets extra fighty or plus one to wound or re-rolling wound rolls, which you can get by various different sources. The thing that he's lost though is fights first. He can no longer just use the moment shackle to interrupt an enemy trying to charge him, which could make his unit borderline unchargeable for lots of enemy things. Just knowing that they can't afford to take a whole ton of guardian spears plus treasure on himself and still have enough models left to threaten the squad. Really seems that Fights First has been kind of gutted from the Custodes Codex. It did feel like one of their signature moves before. So much so that it could make the game really difficult for enemy melee armies. Overall though, certainly not feel good changes for the Captain General. He just feels maybe a little bit more boring now I must admit. Just adding you raw extra might as opposed to anything more unique. I would hope that he'd probably get a points reduction to compensate him for that. Although admittedly he was considered a very very competitive model before. Though I feel like without the fights first or the ignores damage modifiers, that's certainly taken a knock even if he is still really scary with his raw hitting power. Finally for the Custodia's mainline characters, we've got Valerian. He was 115 points pre-codex, so the single cheapest character. He's a shield captain that doesn't get the free stratagems, which in some of the detachments maybe isn't the biggest deal here. In general he gets a slightly boosted profile. Having a 6 plus feel no pain so he's slightly more durable. His Guardian Spear gets 3 attacks rather than 2 which is fun. And in melee it gets you a big 7 attacks at strength 8, AP 3 and damage 2. So significantly better against things like enemy space marines. He'll go through them very quickly indeed. Otherwise for his special rules he worsens the AP of enemy attacks against his unit by 1. So sort of permanent armour of contempt for his squad which is no bad thing. Genuinely, perhaps now Trajan Valoris isn't quite as auto-include, he might well generally see a lot more play, he was a bit niche before. Otherwise though, his Lion Helm has taken a hit, he, once per battle he gets to make a wound hit roll or saving throw an automatic 6, that is for him personally as opposed to his squad, could get you an easy lethal hit with that spear if you wanted perhaps, or guarantee that he passes one save, but it did lose perhaps the more powerful part of that ability, which was single hit wound and save rerolls, which was really quite a nice thing to have in the unit. Overall, I must admit it hasn't been the best updates to be a custodian's character. The shield captains might have a few less battle tactics to go around. The blade champion, Trajan Valoris and Valerian have all got nerfed in their own ways, all losing at least genuinely useful special rules. I wouldn't be too surprised if there's a bit of a points rewrite as a result. I feel like a lot of these could afford to get a fair bit cheaper. In the context of this brave new world though, where those special rules aren't a thing, I still think they'll all be playable at the right points cost. They do both still add multiple special rules to each unit. I think the Blade Champion is still going to be at least fairly pivotal given that he gets to advance and charge, a big thing for a slow moving melee army. Finally for the Custodius data sheets, we're on to the Sisters of Silence. They've got the three core units in Prosecutors, Vigilators and Witch Seekers. Toughness 3 Infantry with a 3 plus save. And their signature ability is Daughters of the Abyss, a 3 plus feel no pain against psychic attacks and also Mortal Wounds now which is a new addition. It's definitely an improvement as Mortal Wounds go through anything, but out of these girls versus the actual Adeptus Custodes I feel like the Mortal Wounds are the things that you really want to avoid on the big boys more so than the cheaper infantry. In any case for Prosecutors specifically they get Objective Control too so they're more sturdy on points than some. Their damage output's really not good, just with basic bolters, and then two attacks at strength 3 in close combat. Their special rule is that if they target a psyche unit, they get precision and devastating wounds, giving you a small chance to maybe snipe something like an Imperial Guard primary psyche or similar out of a unit. The other change that they had was that they lost battle line, so you can't take lots and lots of them anymore, though I feel like for the most part they were generally a unit that you wanted small numbers of for objective support and grunt work. Despite just not really doing a lot of anything, I still think they're going to be really quite a competitive unit. They were really, really cheap pre-codex, and there's no reason to suspect they won't be now. 40 points for small units of four of them is quite good just for holding down objectives with minimal investment if the opponent can't reach them. Maybe doing expendable screening work or secondary objectives, putting one or two units in strategic reserve I don't think is the worst for trying just to drum up a few victory points from secondaries. 
In general, I'd rate them as a unit that typically you want some of, but not more. Otherwise, we've got the Vigilators, 50 points per 4, going up to 130 per 10. These girls have the same profile, but with Objective Control 1, and they're the close combat variant that fights with the Executioner Great Blades, two attacks at Strength 5, AP 2, and Damage 2, and have Devastating Wounds, so the chance for some ignores armor and invulnerable saves there, and that goes off with anti Psyche on a 5+, plus against their preferred foe. The Great Blades were nerfed, unfortunately. They used to be anti Psyche 4+, plus, and these girls were genuinely scary against Psychers. I really don't think they needed a nerf against them, given they're just not particularly great against other things. They just feel like a unit that struggles for a role in Codex Adeptus Custodes, when you've already got absolutely bucket loads of damage to AP2 melee, and are much more sturdy bodies. They could still be interesting enough for some of the options in Talons of the Emperor or in the Nor Maidens Force. A few of those things work with plus one to hit, which feels more relevant on them than elsewhere. Their special rule is a minus one to hit in melee, which I guess doesn't massively hurt their durability, though it doesn't get to the point of making them tough when they cost on average around about 12 or 13 points per model. Finally, for the more core sisters units, we've got the Witch Seekers, 50 points per four, going up to 130 points per 10. The Witch Seekers, I feel like, were perhaps one of the other interesting variants of them. 10 points extra over a minimum investment prosecutor squad to get the scout 6 inches keyword and some actually genuinely dangerous anti-infantry threats with a whole bunch of flame shots. It seems that these just haven't changed whatsoever in the codex. I feel like they were usable enough before. 50 points for a minimum investment squad to move towards midfield objectives, maybe screen out enemy scouts if that matters. And then they do actually have a little bit of threats to thin out enemy hordes if it does make sense for them to deal some damage. I feel like with just flamers, trying to make them work as primary damage dealers still isn't really going to work too well. Probably best to invest just in more custodies for the most part, though I feel like just a big unit of them jumping out of a rhino could be fairly fun at least on paper. In the talents of the Emperor you could get them to a big strength 5 and AP minus 1, and with an average of 35 hits coming out of such a unit that could certainly blast away some enemy infantry. It does sound kind of fun on paper even if they're not very tough. A unit like that could be quite a big overwatch threat as well, though they'd just be having the strength 4 and AP 0 for that. If you want to transport for the sisters, you can take the Anathema Sycana Rhino. It's won 75 points, and like the rest, got the improvements for being durable against mortal wounds from that Daughters of the Abyss rule. Otherwise, it's much like any other Rhino in 40k. Toughness 9 and 10 wounds, gets a Storm Bolter and Hunter Killer Missile. Really quite tough for its points cost, though it doesn't really do too much besides delivering units. In theory, seems nice enough for delivering the Witch Seekers or Vigilators to deal damage if you actually want to try and make them work as actual damage dealers. Given it's got the Anathema Sycana keyword, it could trigger the Talons of the Emperor benefit for the Custodies, I suppose. I guess that gives you at least one durable unit that could keep that buff going, that the opponent's unlikely to want to waste shots trying to gun down, particularly when there's Custodies to worry about. Overall, Rhinos are good at what they do, it's just whether or not they've got things that are actually worth transporting that's more the question. Finally, for the Sisters of Silence characters, first up we've got the Knight Centura. She's 75 points as the generic HQ for them that could bear those Nor Maiden Task Force enhancements. She gets either the Execution of Great Blade that gets 3 attacks, or the Flamer or a Bolter that gets damage too. The only major changes that she got were the change to Daughters of the Abyss and the Great Blade getting anti psycho 5 plus, not 4. Otherwise, she gives plus two to move, advance, and charge, so it makes the sisters move extra quick, and probably wants to wind up in combat, given that the execution of Great Blade is by far the most threatening thing here, and her special rule revolves around it as well, forcing desperate escape tests if the enemy falls back, provided it's not a monster or vehicle, minus one to the test if the enemy is battle shocked. In theory, it could be disruptive, though it sort of depends on the sisters of silence reaching combat, and then they're just not getting immediately wiped out with their fragile profiles. I guess if you want to try and make one work in a more generic army, maybe with a unit of Vigilators could be interesting. She can get genuinely very fighty in the Nor Maiden Task Force with that Raptor Blade though. Four attacks at Strength 6 and Damage 3 is a lot more threatening. Finally for the sisters, we've got their unique character and Valerian's partner in crime in a layer. She's 80 points as a side grade on the Knight Centura. She just flat out gets better melee with four attacks at Strength 6, AP 3 and Damage 3. Fairly potent against enemy terminators and things, it gets devastating wounds and again has been nerfed to anti psycho 5 plus. The thing that she brings to the army is fights first, which does look at least somewhat intimidating on vigilators, 
means that your opponent might want to think twice about charging them with things like standard space marines, and beyond that she gets a damage buff as her squad takes casualties. If you've lost one model it's plus one to hit, if you've lost more than half then it's plus one to wound as well. Overall only really feels worth it on Vigilators to me. The fights first seems like the biggest deal, you can't usually reliably trigger that rule. So overall depends on the combined prospect of both her and Vigilators being cheap enough to be worth going with. While she's at 80 points and 10 Vigilators are 130, I don't think we're at that point yet. I guess in herself, even Ron Solo, she might not be the absolute worst unit in the world. Could do weird disruptive things with just literally her and a Rhino moving towards midfield objectives with Scout potentially. Probably a bit more of a zany and wacky tactic that doesn't really make sense versus doing something sensible though. Overall, as mentioned, it doesn't seem to be the most successful first outing of the Codex, with it getting very widely criticised across the internet where I've seen it. It perhaps doesn't really help that it's been released at the same time as Orcs, which just seem like they've had a lot more fun and creativity thrown into their detachment rules, perhaps being a little bit more daring with adding detachment rule power and a few buffs as opposed to fairly widespread nerfs here. I have seen a fair bit of hyperbole saying that Adeptus Custodes are finished as a faction or things like that, I think until points come out and people have actually had chance to play with things like Talons of the Emperor and things, I'll reserve judgement on that a little bit. Custodes absolutely could get very very strong with points costs alone, and while a few of the best attachment stratagems and things have taken downgrades, they still have some pretty interesting options I think. As I mentioned in a recent video, I'm still looking forward to painting up some Custodes myself and putting them on the board. If they do wind up being super weak, which is definitely possible, I suspect that Games Workshop will address it somehow in a future balance update, either with points or some sort of return of special rules. I do wonder if they're going to wind up putting some sort of protection against devastating wounds on the army, army-wise. Otherwise, I think there's a reasonable chance they could just get taken apart by things with combi weapons and similar. Otherwise, for detachments, I feel like the Talons of the Emperor and the Shield Host are the most interesting. I'm really not the biggest fan of the Talons Detachment rule, I think it's kind of weak, but literally all the stratagems I think are interesting, even if you're primarily focusing on just putting them on normal Custodes units and forgetting about the Sisters of Silence bar objective scoring and farming out the Mortal Wound Defense. The Aegis Projector and the Gift of Terran Artifice both seem very good enhancements just for a bit of raw might as well. Otherwise the shield host does get very fighty for a turn, the Castellan's Mark is a good enhancement and some of the stratagems are interesting. I do feel like the lack of battle tactics is a real weakness though, makes the shield captains just far less useful. Otherwise I think it is a bit disappointing there wasn't a bit more good news and side grade on the data sheets. It was a bit relentless with the nerfs, which even if these go down in points as a result, I don't think is the most feel good thing for a launched codex. I guess the best thing is about the changes in terms of power were the plus one to hit on Castellan axes though by my numbers they still seem worse than Guardian Spears, and I guess the Sisters of Silence getting mortal wound protection was something. Otherwise though, a lot of nerfs to a lot of data sheets, particularly the characters took some big hits, Trajan Valoris maybe more so than most, and kind of a shame to see some units that were just generally underwhelming before not getting upgrades. I feel like they could have had another think about the Virtus Praetor special rule for example. It is cool imagery of them zooming across other units, but it just doesn't really math out to be that much good damage. I am maybe a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a bit more in terms of just raw damage and threat for the Sisters of Silence detachment as well. It would have been really cool if they'd been at least somewhat of a semi-viable army to stand alone. I think they actually did quite well with that as a detachment for the crude hunting pack. They gave out a fairly big core damage boost and a fairly big defensive boost to try and make them actually carry the tower as a sort of odd horde army but I think Battleshock things just weren't enough for the Normaiden Vigil. Overall, definitely lots of downsides. It's not going to stop me putting some Golden Boys on the table though. I think I'll first be looking to try out the Talons of the Emperor and those fun stratagems, and we'll wait and see what the points costs are for the faction. If they've taken a whole load of points cuts, then they could still be one of the strongest armies in the game. We don't know at this point. In any case, look forward to hearing your takes down in the comments below, and feel free to let me know if I've missed anything crucial on the slides at all, I'll try and post a pinned comment if there's anything missing that's major. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. 
If any of that's of interest to you, the link's down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.